Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago Edits live stream. In this series, we take a look at editing images submitted by the community and we focus on a different photographic style for each episode. And this time around, we're taking a look at the warm and earthy style. So I'll be sharing some tips and tricks for how to achieve this particular look. I'll also share and we'll explore some of the presets, creative profiles and tools to help achieve this in post-production as well. We've done two streams already in this series, the first of which was a dark and moody edit and the second of which was light and airy and this time around we're warm and earthy. And I've got five amazing images submitted by the community that I'll be editing with today. So each of those photographers that have been selected for this stream will be receiving a free preset collection of their choice and we'll be sharing an email towards the end of the stream to let you know where to get in touch to claim your free preset collection. If you haven't yet submitted and you'd like to, you'll find a link in the description of this video where you can submit your raw images for us to choose from for future streams. So you can upload some raw files there, rename those files with your full name, and if you'd like, you can also include your Instagram handle as well. And we'll choose from that pool of images for future live streams. And if you haven't uh, yet seen your image and you've, you've already submitted some images, don't worry, we'll continue to choose from that pool of images for future live streams, so it could be chosen later down the line. So keep tuning in, check out those live streams to see if your image has been featured. So if you are tuned in live, uh, do jump in the chat and say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And let me know if this is the first time that you've been on an Archipelago live stream as well. I always like to know when you're new around here. But for anyone that is new, my name is Liam. I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. I'm very excited to have you here. So I can see we've got Troy on. Hey Troy, welcome back. Vernon's on as well. Warm and earthy is my vibe, says Vernon. You're in the right place. That is good news. Yeva's on, Kimber's on, Lauren's on, MK's on. I'm sure you've been on before as well. Woot woot, let's go, absolutely. Letha, well, hello from Florida. Hey Letha, thanks for joining. Kimber's in Missouri, very nice. Good stuff, so we'll get underway shortly. Like I said, we have five amazing images that I'll be editing with today. Now I selected these images, uh, both because they're fantastic photos, but also because they suit the uh, warm and earthy edits, which is what we're going for today. And as we go through, you're gonna see the photographer's name in the top left um, of the image. So if you wanna check out more of the work, you can do that. Troy says, Liam, where are you, bro? I'm in the UK, I'm in England, in Sheffield, in the north of the UK. So uh, it's evening time where I am. So I've got the ambient lighting going. Sarah's on as well, welcome Sarah. So like I said, we've got these five amazing images. This is the first one, this one here from Raquel Zane. Gorgeous photo. And before we dive in and start editing with this image, I'm just gonna talk really quickly about um, the right types of images for warm and earthy edits. And obviously looking at this photo, you can probably tell why I picked it. It's mainly because of the very cute goat. I mean, come on, look at it, it's beautiful. Uh, but it's also because of the tonality of the image. So when you think about warm and earthy edits, really tonality is key. Uh, and when we think about those tones, that's gonna be browns, reds, oranges, yellows, those warm earthy tones, uh, kind of desaturated greens as well. And that kind of excludes colors like blue and purple and a lot of magenta, things like that. It doesn't mean that they can't be in the image at all, but they don't want to be dominant in the image if you'd like to create that warm and earthy look. So definitely something to consider when it comes to shooting. This image is gonna be perfect because we have a very uh, muted color palette, very earthy. We have the warm tones running throughout the image. 
and um, we've got obviously that yellow color in the grass we've got the brown leaves we have some green in the top of the frame there but it's uh, quite a warm toned green and it's obviously quite subtle being at the back of the image so this one is a great a great one for that warm and earthy look so let's go ahead and start editing this one by Raquel you can see up here as well we've also got the EXIF data so if you're intrigued as we go through what lens they use things like that you can see the EXIF data up there and this one is a Nikon file so we can see that by the NEF at the top all right so let's start by just correcting the white balance and the exposure uh, so exposure is looking pretty good I think it could maybe brought up a tiny little bit and I'm probably going to go ahead and put lens corrections on just going to bring the vignette back a little bit. Uh, there's a little tiny bit of magenta, so I'm just going to back that off a tiny bit there. And let's have a look at the, the temperature. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, so for this, I'm going to use one of the Quest sets. And I'm going to go for Quest 8, which some of you may know is a Nomad Special Edition set. So this is an extension beyond the regular Archipelago Nomad set that explores uh, four new color presets. There's a new creative profile in there as well. And it's a perfect set as is the Nomad collection for the warm and earthy tones. So let's take a look at the presets. So I think I am definitely drawn to AQ082 Nomad SE. So that's one click with the preset. We're getting that gorgeous, warm, earthy tone in straight away. You can see what it's done to the greens in the background. If we just take a look at the before and after so slightly warm those up it's really emphasized the the color tones um, in in the kind of grass here the warmth and of course in the subjects as well now I've got the equinox profile that's applied as default uh, with this preset and you can obviously increase or decrease it with the slider here but also included is the uh, equinox autumnal and vernal adjustments here which just shift that profile one way or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply autumnal, which will increase the profile to 135. So that's pushing that warm look a little bit further. It's looking incredibly nice. We've also got a couple of extra tools in this set as well. So we have diffuse and specular, and I think I'll definitely use diffuse on this. You can see just the kind of softening that it applies. If I go ahead and zoom in on the subjects here, this is without and this is with diffuse. So just adds that nice softness to the image. And of course, we've got the preset amount slider that's now included with the newer versions of Lightroom. So I can increase or decrease that particular effect using the slider there as well. So I'm gonna leave that at 100. I like what it's doing to the image. So for those that don't know, Quest is our subscription series so this is something that you can become a member of and what happens is each month we re release a new preset collection and if you are a member you get to download download that preset collection for free as part of your membership membership is just eight dollars per month and you'll get access to that current month's uh, preset and obviously any future months that you're part of the membership you also get access to download previous uh, quest uh, sets as well so any that were released prior to your subscription you can buy from the archive store and um, so if you haven't got quest 8 and you like the look of it you want to get hold of it if you subscribe to quest today for eight dollars you'll be able to download the current quest set which is quest 20 orphic with the incredible mist preset you might have seen floating around amazing dark and moody uh, preset collection you can download that immediately as part of your subscription and then you'll be able to go into the archive store and purchase uh, Quest 8 for $22 as well. So special pricing on that. All right, so this is looking really good, but I think we could do a couple more things to this. So what I'm actually going to go ahead and do is use the Archipelago AI tool set. So this was released recently to our Archipelago presets newsletter subscribers as a free preset collection. Uh, so if you are not already subscribed to our newsletter, you can do that on our website. I'm sure we'll put a link in the chat. Um, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get access to download the AI tool set for free. So there's some amazing tools in here. It uses the newer uh, AI functionality as part of the masks in Lightroom. Um, so we've got loads of great stuff in here. Things like uh, subject shadow increasing, uh, sharpening the subject, shifting skin tones. Uh, we have sky presets in there that can save detail in the sky, things like that. 
uh, and we've also got things like silver reflector as well and silver reflectors what I'm going to use I think on this and possibly watercolor as well yep so the first one I'm going to use is watercolor so if I hover over the preset here you can see what that's going to do to the image now what this is actually going to do is it's going to leave the subject completely as it is it doesn't affect the subject at all so you'll notice nothing changes on the subjects here but what it does is it's going to soften up the tonality in the background so it's going to blend those colors um, and just give that painterly look so this is without and this is with and again we've got the amount slider so we can increase or decrease that i'm going to go ahead and bring that up fairly high go for that really painterly look so that's looking good and the other one that i'm definitely going to use because i use this on all of my images now is the silver reflector so this emulates the look of using a silver reflector where you bounce light onto the subject uh, therefore kind of bringing more exposure to the subject and darkening the background and you can now achieve that with this particular preset right here in lightroom so this is with silver reflector and this is without so big transformation there i'm just going to again use the amount slider to dial that so i'm looking for something that's just nice and balanced nothing too over the top so i'm going to go for around about there so set it to 65 and then I think because we've added the diffusion, I think I might use the subject sharpen just to bring some definition back to the subjects here. I'm just gonna back that off just a little bit, set that to 62. And if I zoom back out, here's before and here's after. So lovely, warm, earthy edit. We have those gorgeous warm tones running throughout the image. Uh, the greens that are there in the background have been warmed up there and desaturated a little bit as well. Uh, we've used the tools to kind of soften up the background, bring emphasis to the subjects. Um, and we've used uh, Quest 8, which is the Nomad special uh, extension set, the Equinox profile, and a couple of tools that come with that as well. So let me just catch up on the chat here. Let's see what everyone's saying. What's the name of the goat, says Kimber? I'd love to know. I would love to know. Raquel, if you are here, let us know the name of the goat. So Lauren said in the chat, we're going to be giving away some presets to people in the chat who are here live interacting as we go through this stream. So if you just, uh, you know, interact as we go through, let me know what you think to the edits. If you have any questions, let me know. We'll be picking someone from the live chat to win some pre, uh, free presets collections at the end of this as well, which is very exciting. So you've got a few more people joining Lisa's on as well. Diana. Uh, Rob says Quest is not available to purchase on the Quest site. Yes, it is. So all of the archive presets from Quest are available in the archive store. So it's in a slightly separate section. Um, so if you go to the menu, you'll find the archive uh, store there and you'll find all of the previous Quest sets, including the Quest tools and Quest 1 right the way through. Um, you'll find all of those there available to purchase. So if you are a Quest member, you can buy those and they are a special uh, membership price as well. All right, let me show you the side by side on this one. There we go. And let's go ahead and zoom in on the goat and the subject, of course, but the goat mainly. Super nice. Obviously, we backed off the magenta in the original image there a little bit uh, with the white balance. And then, of course, we've used Nomad SE preset number two from Quest 8 with the Equinox profile. And then we've also used a few of the tools from the AI tool set, which is free to newsletter subscribers. Okay, so first image done. Moving on, we have this image here from Shannon Sewell. This is a gorgeous photo. I love this, really nice portrait. Uh, looks like it's quite a cold climate, but it's still a good, uh, a good image for a warm and earthy edit. Again, if you look at the tonality that we have in this image, very, very neutral. Of course, you can see that we need to uh, fix the white balance here. It's very cool, uh, but you can see we've just got the green in the coat 
a little bit of orange in the hat here, and then everything else is just a very neutral color in the background. So let's go ahead and just correct the, the white balance to begin with. So it needs quite a bit of warmth, I think. Somewhere around there looks good. I think the tint looks okay though. Happy with that. And don't think we need any lens corrections or anything. This is uh, a Fuji file. This is an RAF, so it was shot on a Fuji. I believe it was an X-T3, if I remember rightly, and shot with a 35 mil lens. All right, let's hide these away for now. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and use Halcyon for this. So Archipelago Halcyon, this is available on archipelagopresets.com. And this has a nice variety of different presets here. So we start quite warm and as we move through, you can see they go uh, cooler and then we have the black and white here as well. Now I think I'm gonna go for one of the first presets, probably, yeah, let's go Halcyon 1. I love what that's done to the image already. Again, there's before and after. Um, of course, we've increased the white balance quite a bit there, but the preset is pushing that warm and earthy look. So let's have a look. We've got the Eclipse profile. This is set to zero as default with these presets. And what Eclipse does, if you see here, it's going to add a graduated filter to darken the bottom half of the frame, something I love doing in images um, already. So great to have that as a profile part of this particular preset. So let's use that. I'm going to bring the Eclipse profile up uh, just to kind of draw the eye up into the image to where the subject's face is there. So I'm going to set that to around about, let's go there, about 97. So again, this is before and after with Halcyon. Nice, simple edit. I probably wouldn't do too much else with this. Um, I think maybe the only other thing, if we go into the AI tool set, uh, I don't need to use silver reflect or anything. We've already got some nice uh, luminance on the subject here. But I think what we could go for, because we have this light that's coming in from just above the mountains in the background, we could go for the hazy light uh, preset in the AI tool set. So this basically selects the light areas of your image and uh, adds a haze to that area of the image. So you can see here, it's gonna add that kind of nice, soft, hazy look to the light. So if I go ahead and apply that, again, we can be more subtle or we can go for something a bit more intense. I'm gonna go somewhere in between, maybe, maybe about there. So set it to 83 and that's just kind of softened up the, uh, the light as it transitions from above the mountains down to the, the kind of grass behind the subject here. And that looks really nice to me. So here's before and here's after. Let me show you that side by side. Suggestions on good skin tones when using these presets. So my suggestion is get your white balance correct before you apply the preset. That's the biggest thing that we see that people really struggle with. So if you're finding that your skin tones aren't looking good, um, the best thing to do is start with the raw image with no edit at all and get your white balance as close to accurate as possible. A lot of the time when we see people that struggle with skin tones, the white balance is off and they're sort of trying to wrestle the preset to get the skin tones that they want. But if you start with accurate white balance, you're gonna get 90% of the way that you want to be. The presets are obviously designed to um, give really flattering, really beautiful skin tones, but that's good white balance. So they're, they're the things to start with. Get the exposure correct. Don't underexpose um, loads, don't overexpose too much. Get a nice good exposure in camera for the most amount of data. And then also start with a really good white balance before you apply the preset. Obviously it's raw, so in a way it doesn't matter. You can apply the preset and then go ahead and, and adjust the white balance. Um, but it's much easier if you start with the white balance first before any edits are applied. When you put a preset on there, it's obviously gonna shift all of the tones. That's part of what a preset's doing. Um, so once it shifts the tones, it becomes a, a lot harder to correct the white balance and get that looking right. But if you do that first, when you've got an image with no edits on at all, then apply the preset. Of course, you can go back and tweak it after, but you'll have much more accurate skin tones from the start. 
Uh, we have also got a tool in the AI tool set that will help with that as well. Um, so I'll show you that in a little while. And that is the skin hue uh, minus and plus that allows you to selectively adjust the skin tones um, within your image using AI. Great question. Judith says, uh, can't find the tool set, where could I find it? So you need to subscribe to the Archipelago Presets newsletter. So archipelagopresets.com forward, forward slash newsletter hyphen sign up, I think it is. Um, we'll put a link in. But if you sign up to the newsletter, you'll receive an email uh, allowing you to download those presets for free. Okay, so amazing image there from Shannon. Thank you so much, Shannon, for submitting. You are gonna get a free preset collection of your choice. So do reach out to us uh, via the email that we share at the end of the stream. Okay, so next image we have here from Sigrid Muehlmans. This is a gorgeous photo. We're in um, some sort of greenhouse, glass house. We have all these amazing cact cacti around the subjects in the middle here. And again, when we talk about those, uh, the color palette, um, you know, very muted tonality throughout this. Really the only color in this image, uh, aside from the warm tones in the skin, is the greens in the cacti. So this is a gorgeous photo. This is another Nikon file here. So let's go ahead and set the white balance. And the exposure, I'm just gonna boost that a little bit. Let's pop these away for now. So I'm gonna use another Quest set for this. I'm gonna use Quest 5, which is the gem tone set. And let's go through these very quickly. So I've got three color presets and one black and white. I'm gonna go for AQ053. Now each of these presets sets a different profile. And in this case, that's Jasper. And that's set to 100 as default. So let's have a quick play around with the profile. I love Jasper, it's really, really nice. You can see this is at a zero, this is at 200. Uh, really pushes in those brown tones in the shadows. Got that nice warmth throughout the mid-tones there as well. So I'm gonna increase this a good amount. I love what it's done with the greens here. Again, we've gone for that sort of desaturated green look. Here's before, here's after. So that can really help with that warm and earthy look. Brooke says, I love greenhouse sessions. Yes, me too. The light's always so nice in greenhouses. And of course, the amazing details that are surrounded with. All right, so let's go ahead and use some more AI tools on this. And I've got to use my favorite, Silver Reflector. It's gonna work wonders here. So you can see big transformation there. Just bringing uh, more uh, illumination to the subjects, darkening down that background. So I'm gonna select that. And again, I'm gonna find a nice position for that. So I think somewhere around there looks quite natural. So I've set that to 66. We could use hazy light again. That's gonna look quite nice. You can see what that's doing to the background. Again, this is at zero, this is at 200. So just bloom in those highlights a little bit. I'm gonna bring that up. Yeah, I'm gonna set that to about 90. So just a little bit of a subtle effect. It's kind of hitting this area here where the light is. And let's see what else. Oh yeah, got to use watercolor on this as well. Love the way it's softening up and blending those tones in the background. So this is it at zero and at 200. So I'm gonna go relatively high. I'm gonna set it to 140. Bring the exposure up just a little bit more. That's looking super nice to me. So here's before and here's after. So that's with AQ05 preset three. We've got the Jasper profile, which we've increased. And then we've used a couple of tools from the AI tool set. We've used hazy light, watercolor and silver reflector. And there's a the side by side for you. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the subjects. Absolutely gorgeous. Love what it's done to the skin tones. Again, love what it's done to the greens. You can see over here, just warm those up. 
and now I have that really sort of consistent earthy look and again watercolor just soften up that background hazy light adding a little bit of dreaminess to it and then the silver reflector just to balance the subject and the background Gary says oh what was that silver reflector tool yes the silver reflector tool is part of the AI tool set Again, that's a free preset collection available for our newsletter subscribers. So if you aren't already subscribed, I mean, you're already missing out because all of the best deals, all the information about new presets, all of the news comes through the newsletter first. So it's where you find out about everything. Uh, but not only that, we have exclusive tools like this uh, available for our newsletter subscribers. Uh, so if you subscribe now, you'll be able to get hold of the AI tool set for free. And we're going to have more goodies coming to news out of subscribers down the line as well. I can see that Sigrid is on here actually. Amazing. Thanks for joining. Sigrid said, I wish I had the silver reflector tool when I edited this photo myself. But it got released the day after delivering this gallery. Oh, timing. Tell me about it. I love the Silver Reflect tool. Like I said, I've been using it on absolutely everything. It does an amazing job of just really bringing emphasis to your subject, but in a very natural way. All right, so there we go, Sigrid. Gorgeous photo. Thank you so much for submitting it. You'll be getting a free preset collection. Again, we'll share the, uh, the email to reach out to us at the end of the stream. And we'll get you whatever you like as far as Archipelago presets. Okay, next image here from Robin. This is a shot on a Canon camera. We've got a 120 mil lens here. Uh, sorry, it's actually a 70 to 200 mil lens, but shot at 120 mil focal length. So we've got that gorgeous separation in terms of the depth of field between the subject and the background and talk about the subjects. I mean, I'm a sucker for animals anyway, but look at that dog. So beautiful. And I love this little setup here with the book the outfit as well really really nice so let's go ahead and again let's start by correcting the white balance maybe a little bit of an increase I think there is a little bit of vignetting from the lens so I'm just gonna correct the distortion and just keep a little bit of the vignette Temperature's looking good. It's already nice and warm, which is correct because we've got obviously this sun sunlight. It looks like it's sort of golden hour around sunset time. The light's coming in from this side here, hitting the subjects beautifully. Uh, tint's looking good, I think, as well. So I'm happy with that. All right, so for this, let's go ahead and use Nomad. So this is the Archipelago Nomad set. And let's just run through these really quickly. Nomad 1, Nomad 2 is looking good, Nomad 3, a bit cooler, Nomad 4 is cooler as well, 5, Ooh, 6 looks nice. It's between 2 and 6. What do we think? 2 or 6? Diana says, I thought Silver Reflector would give a bluish look, but I'm loving it. No, it does not. It's a neutral look. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very neutral look, mim mimicking uh, using a Silver Reflector, uh, which just bounces neutral light back at the subject. Of course, there's also a gold reflector in there as well. So as part of the AI tool set, there's a gold reflector. So if you want to add some warm light to your subject, that preset is included, and that obviously mimics using a gold reflector. Uh, so we got two, 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 two. All right, two it is. Nomad two. Cool. So with Nomad, uh, we have the Summer Fields profile set with this particular preset. That's set to 100. This is the profile at zero. And obviously, if we crank it up, we get that really nice, rich warmth, which Nomad is known for. So I'm going to increase it a little bit, not too far. Uh, we've already got quite a lot of warmth going on in this image anyway with the light. Uh, so let's take a look at, I'm going to use, let's use something from Redwood. So there's a couple of tools that come with the Redwood preset collection uh, that I love to use as well. So the first one is Painterly. So Painterly softens up the background, blends the tonality. So you can see here, it's relatively subtle, but what it's doing is, again, not affecting the subject. 
this is it at zero, this is it at 200. It just starts to blend those colors together. So let's go somewhere around about there. So 129. Uh, so it blends those colors together, just softens up that background. Obviously we've got a lot of softness there from the focal length, but it just pushes that a little bit further. Uh, let's also look at using a lower gradient. So uh, this adds a gradient to the image without affecting the subject again. So this one just adds that to the bottom half of the frame. So I can just bring that up just a little bit just to darken down this area without affecting the subjects and let's just have a quick look at the overall exposure yep i think that looks good i'm just going to back off the magenta a little bit there we go so here's before here's after obviously we've done a little bit of a lens correction there we've used nomad 2 the Summerfields uh, profile, which we've increased a little bit. We've used Painterly from Redwood, which softens up the background, blends the tonality together. And then we've also used Lower Gradient just to kind of subtly darken down the foreground here. Again, bringing emphasis to the subject. So here's the side-by-side. -side. Absolutely gorgeous photo by Robin zoom in on the beautiful dog again I love it all right so let's have a look at the questions a question about subject pop Yeah, as Lauren said, subject pop just affects the background. So all subject pop does is darken down the background, subtly soften it, uh, and again, just draw emphasis to the subject uh, without affecting the actual subject themselves, just by darkening down the background. Uh, whereas the silver reflector will do a mul multiple different things within the actual preset, but part of what it's doing is, is lifting the shadows, illuminating the subject, and darkening down the background as well. So there's more happening within Silver Reflector versus Subject Pop. Um, sometimes I'll use actually both of those tools together because they can be stacked together. Uh, sometimes I'll prefer to use one or the other as well. So great to have the choice. Sigrid says, I love the AI tool set so much. Thank you very much, Sigrid. All right, so. Last image here, this one's by Judy Wall. Another Canon image, we've got this gorgeous little family photo here. Again, when we talk about the color, colors and tonality in the image, uh, this image by Judy here, we've got lovely greens and yellows in the background. Again, nothing too intense. The outfits that the subjects are wearing here, we've got brown tones, kind of orangey tones here as well, cream tones. We have got some blue here and just in the color there, but it's very subtle, it's not overpowering. Uh, and of course, depending on what presets we use, it's gonna uh, you know, desaturate those blues and kind of blend the tonality a little bit better and give that warm and earthy look. So for this, I'm gonna use Archipelago Ore. So Ore presets are absolutely stunning. And when we think of warm and earthy edits, we should definitely think of Ore. Uh, let's go ahead and just increase the temperature a little bit. Nothing too drastic because it's already looking pretty good. I think tint is fine. Exposure is looking fine. Maybe a tiny increase. And let's take a look at the preset. So all one. That's gorgeous with the gold profile. Rose gold. Copper and iron. I think I'm going to go for or one or or two. I think or two. I just like the way it's lifting the shadows up a little bit. It's slightly warmer as well. So again, we've got the gold profile. This is set to 100 as default, and we can increase or decrease that. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit just to add a little bit more warmth. So that's looking good to me. Uh, let's go ahead and use that silver reflector again because that's always a winner. 
give it a second to detect the subjects. I'm going to bring that back down. So this is at a zero. I'm just going to find something that's a nice, subtle effect. So about there, 51. That's looking good already. So this is at the before and this is after. So this is an image where I might use the skin hue tools. So uh, like I said, if you are struggling with skin tones and you've got the correct white balance and you've applied the preset and you like everything else that the preset's offering, but you feel like your skin tones are just a little bit off still, this is where the skin hue minus and skin hue plus uh, presets in the AI tool set can come into handy. Uh, so essentially skin hue minus will shift the skin tones more towards the yellow side and skin hue plus will shift the skin tones more towards the magenta side. And because we've got the preset amount slider, you can determine exactly how much that is. So this is it at zero without any adjustment. This is it at 200. So you can see it's only affecting the subject's skin here as it moves the tones. Uh, so it's actually affecting uh, the orange tonality in the image, which skin tones fall into. So you will also see that this uh, jumper down here is being affected a little bit as well. But I think for this, it looks really nice. It's just bringing a little bit more magenta back into the skin tones, which I think looks great. So I'm gonna set that to about 134. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I will again use uh, Painterly from Redwood. Uh, and that's just to soften up the background because we've got this foliage is relatively busy. So I just wanna soften that up a little bit. And again, make sure the emphasis is on the subjects. So background Painterly. This is it at zero, and this is it at 200. So I'm not gonna to go too extreme. I wanna set it to around about, might leave it the default, 100. That looks great to me. So here's the before, and here's after. I'll show you this side by side there as well, and that's with all, preset two. We've increased the gold profile a little bit there as well. We've added silver reflector to darken the background and uh, add exposure to the subjects. We've used the Skin Hue Plus to adjust the skin tones, add a little bit more magenta back in, and then the Painterly uh, tool from Redwood to soften the background out. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Super nice. Daniel Lee says, uh, how are people getting this neutral raw? Mine looks like they've been thrown, thrown up by a clown. So part of it is gonna be um, exposure level in camera. I think if you shoot drastically under or overexposed, the colors will look a bit, bit off as well. It does affect the, uh, the amount of tonality in the image. So that's really important. But then also, uh, whether you have auto white balance set in camera or whether you're adjusting it manually using Kelvin, something like that. So definitely worth checking out both of those two things, uh, making sure that your exposure level is correct, but also uh, looking at the white balance. It doesn't really matter if you're shooting raw. You know, I just use auto. Sometimes my camera goes a little bit wacky, especially if I'm shooting something where there's a lot of greens, it's gonna shift more towards the magenta. I'm not too fussed about that when I'm shooting because I'm shooting in raw, so I can obviously adjust that in the edit, so I'll typically just do that, but I know some people prefer to get that right in camera, and you can do that by using Kelvin or using certain like daylight or indoor uh, settings to, to let your camera know what type of conditions you're shooting in, and that will help a lot with getting the colors to look good and neutral in the raw file. Bevin mentioned about the, uh, the neutral color profile in camera. So that will definitely help a lot with how the image looks uh, on the back of your camera, but it actually has no bearing on how the image looks in Lightroom or when it comes to editing the RAW. What will actually happen when you import the image into Lightroom, uh, the profile will actually switch from the camera's profile uh, and it will typically go to Adobe Color, which is the Adobe standard profile now. So Adobe Color is what's set. Now, again, that doesn't even matter because as soon as you edit with a preset like Archipelago presets, that's gonna get switched again with a creative profile. So like in this case, we have the gold profile at the top right there. So don't worry too much about the in-camera profile. It can help to see a more uh, neutral looking image on the back of the camera if that's helpful while you're shooting, but it actually doesn't have any bearing on how the files look 
uh, when it comes to editing because that will get replaced by Adobe Color when you import it and then that will be replaced by whichever creative profile from the presets that you're using. So great question, but don't worry too much about that in camera. Obviously different if you're shooting uh, JPEG because that's going to be baked into the image. Kim says, how would you create warm and earthy in full sun photos? The same rules apply. Um, what I would say about full sun photos is when you when you have full sun, uh, you're gonna have harsh shadows. And I think when we think about the warm and earthy edits, actually a big part of that is having detail in the shadows. Um, if I kind of switch back to this image here, you can see the kind of muted shadows uh, and the warm tone shadows are, are kind of a key part. So that kind of, that brown toning, that warm toning in the shadows and that slight muting is definitely something that's, that's kind of present in a lot of the what we would consider warm and earthy edits. It doesn't have to be, you can have deep blacks. Um, and of course, if you're shooting in harsh daylight, you're gonna have very deep dark shadows, um, but it's it doesn't lend itself well to that type of, uh, that type of look because having those those shadows having a little bit of that kind of crushed black with the warm tonality that brown running through it is kind of key to the to the look of the images so if i go back to the give this a second for these to upload so you can see as we look at these images these will just take a second to uh to update as well so all of these still have a lot of detail in the shadows they don't have harsh light. I think the harshest one is probably going to be this one where we're backlit and we've got a little bit more deep shadow down here. But even still, when we look at this, you know, we've got that kind of muted shadow look with the warm brown kind of orange tonality running throughout it. So you can achieve the look in harsh light, but it doesn't lend itself well to this. I think um, flat lighting, softer lighting, backlit will work really well and it will definitely give you more of that look. Is Painterly available outside of Redwood? No, it's not. It's one of the tools that's uh, part of Redwood. So if you want to get hold of that, you do need to buy Redwood presets. A great preset collection. Um, it, it explores um, a really nice uh, range of tonalities. There's basically every green tone you can imagine in there. Um, and yeah, I think if you like warm and earthy edits, there are a couple of presets in that, that collection that are also lovely and warm. Um, so definitely worth checking out. But yes, that is part of Redwood only. Shelby says, silver reflector wins every time. Yes, every time. It definitely does. All right, so we'll be announcing a winner in the chat shortly for the uh, free preset collection. So everyone that's been interacting in the chat, you're in with a chance of winning. We'll announce a winner for that shortly. But just a reminder, uh, all of these images that we've edited today, the photographer's of these fantastic images will be getting a free preset collection of their choice so if this is your photo uh, do reach out to us via our support email which is support at archipelagopresets.com and we'll get that sorted out for you and if you haven't submitted an image go ahead and do that you know like i said before we've got the uh, the link in the description of this video you can submit your raw files you do need to make sure they're in raw format replace the uh, file name with your full name and if you want your Instagram handle and upload those images, we'll be picking from those for future live streams. There we go. Lauren's announced the winners of the preset collection of their choice. So we've got Bevin, IRP, Bridget, and Jennifer. So fantastic. Congratulations to all of you. You are winning free preset collections of your choice. Reach out to support presets.com. We'll get those sorted out for you. Very, very exciting. Uh, so while I've got you all, please make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and make sure to go and check out some more of the content that we've got on our YouTube channel. And if you are available on the 27th of October, we'll have another live stream. And that one's gonna be a sneak peek look at what's coming as part of Quest 21. And let me just tell you, if you are uh, someone that loves Archipelago Wayfarer presets, you're gonna love this next set because it is a Wayfarer SE special edition uh, preset collection as part of Quest. 
Uh, so I'll be editing with that, showing some sneak peeks, and of course, we'll be giving away a pre-release copy of Quest 21 Wayfarer SE. So come and join me on the 27th for another live stream. If you are subscribed, you'll get notifications to let you know when that's happening. But it's been great to have you on here. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you again in the next one.